In my video Shiloh, the Ark of the Covenant, God's Temple, and you, I discussed how we are actually God's temple right now. We are called to be priests, like Christ, our high priest. Only the high priest was allowed into the Holy of Holies, and through Jesus Christ sending us the fiery Holy Spirit, we now are the temple of God. Only the high priest was allowed into the Holy of Holies. Jesus was, but we are washed in Jesus' righteousness and are called priests in the Bible. The priests were the judges too. Hebrews 4.14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Notice that it says Jesus was tempted. God cannot be tempted. James 1.13 But Jesus was a man who was tempted and listening to his Father's will every day. But the important note is we have a great high priest, that is Jesus. Let us hold fast our profession, that is the priesthood, like Jesus. 1 Peter 2.9 But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye would shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving, th giving thanks to his name, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifice God is well pleased. Romans 12.1 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Revelation 5.7 And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Those who are raptured before the seals are opened here are singing to Jesus that he has made us kings and priests unto our God Yahweh, and we shall reign on the earth. Remember, priests were judges too. In Corinthians, they talk about people taking things up with others in a court, like by the law, rather than settling it among themselves. How many people do you know today would rather go to court with someone than actually try to work it out themselves? 1 Corinthians 6.1 Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to the law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one, and with, one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. If we Christian saints are called to be priests and judge the world, even angels, why can't we judge amongst ourselves? Matthew 7, 1. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in th thine own eye? This doesn't mean we're not supposed to judge. It means we can't judge if we're not judging ourselves too. 1 Corinthians 11.31 For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. We judge ourselves. 
we get chastened through the Holy Spirit convicting of us of our sin, then we can judge others. We are called to be a priestly profession. We are the temple of God. God is the light of the world, and we, like Jesus, go around showing God to people in our lives. Some of us have better kept temples than others. We should respect. We should respect for the body as a holy temple of God. Um, we should make sure that our sacrifices are accepted. People sacrificed in the Old Testament, but while they were sinning, their sacrifices meant absolutely nothing. They were not getting accepted. I wonder how many Christians today are quote-unquote sacrificing time to do things for God, while in reality they're doing it to feel like they did something, and then they go and sin the rest of the time. Their sacrifice meant nothing to God. We have to make sure our sacrifices are accepted. So few of the seven churches in Revelation were accepted. But they were all churches, all people professing Jesus Christ as Lord, but then they were not sacrificing acceptable sacrifices to God. I think only those that are wise in increasing their knowledge of God and trying to be acceptable to Him are the ones who are going to be the priests. A little while ago, you may remember my video about the calves leaping from the stall. It came about because Informed Christians was reading a verse in Malachi. He mentioned that people would have their name written in the Book of Remembrance. I believe some may, but I thought this might be a special promise to some people, just not to all of them. Malachi is a very short book. When he mentioned it, I decided I would read it. It starts talking about polluted offerings. As I've talked about, people are offering their sacrifices to God, but they're polluted due to sin. He will not be accepting the sacrifices. He won't accept those offerings. You should read the whole book if you're interested in what God has to say about this book of remembrance, his feelings about all these things, but I'll read a little bit. Malachi 1, 6. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith Yahweh of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of Yahweh is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith Yahweh of hosts? See, these people were offering, um, you know, Jesus was the blameless, sinless sacrifice, right? That's why his offering was acceptable. The old offerings used to be, you know, you had to make sure that it wasn't blind. It didn't have any defects at all. But these people were offering up defected things. They were offering up the least, as I talked about in the book of Jasher, I think it talks about Cain offering um, the least of his uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, whatever his offerings were the worst ones. He didn't offer the best ones. That's the whole point. We're supposed to be offering the best of us, not, you know, sinful, uh, you know, offerings. All right, verse 9. And now I pray you, beseech that, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons, saith Yahweh of hosts? Who is there among even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith Yahweh of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith Yahweh of hosts. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say the table of Yahweh is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. We are the heathen and the Gentiles. The Jews were not offering up acceptable sacrifices, and Yahweh's name is great among the heathen and Gentiles now. They came in the name of Yahweh while sinning. They profaned his name. They took his name in vain. Now we take his name in vain. Are you taking it in vain? We need to be doing Yahweh's will each day and not take his name in vain by sinning. I did a video on that too, and I'll leave the link below to it. But Malachi is about how the priests were profaning his name, offering up detestable sacrifices that meant nothing. Malachi 2 is a warning to the priests and talks about Judah's unfaithfulness. Malachi 3 is about the coming day of judgment, and it's a refining time to purify the Levites, son of Levi, those who were priests. Malachi 3.1 
Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, say, and the Lord, sorry, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto Yahweh, as in the days of old, and as in the former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those who oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn against the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith Yahweh of hosts. It talks about robbing God, which I hope reminds you of the video Shiloh of the Ark of the Covenant, God's Temple and You. God is bringing those things up for a reason. Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem yesterday. I mean, a couple of days ago. I wrote this down earlier. Anyway, and one of the first things he did when he entered the city of Jerusalem was he went to the temple and say it is the house of God and that they have made it into a house of thieves or robbers. Malachi 3.16 then they that feared Yahweh spake often one to another, and Yahweh hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahweh, and they, that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith Yahweh of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So the ones in the Book of Remembrance may just be from the Levites, but it also might refer to Christians who fear Yahweh and think on his name. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. It equates fear of Yahweh with wisdom and understanding. We should pray for the truth and grow in wisdom of who Yahweh is. Also remember the parable of the ten virgins. Five are wise. Those who get raptured would be considered wise in looking for Jesus' return. I'm thinking that even though some Christians may be left as hypocrites, they would be giving up the priestly part, perhaps. Those who were taken earlier were wise and had a fear of Yahweh, a, rever a reverence. They may be the ones written in the book of remembrance. It's interesting when Yahweh says he will make up his jewels one day, that he will spare them. This may be a reference to the rapture also. Before I stop talking about Malachi, the cows leaping from the stalls part, I'll leave a link to that video too. I went to Torah Calendar and checked out their calendar. The last Sabbath before Passover on March 19th, they did a reading and I checked it out, which I never do. But of course, it was that passage. Malachi 3, 4 to 4, 6. I read some of Malachi 3 already, but Malachi 4 is on the great day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all those that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and leap about as calves released from the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith Yahweh of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So that was a prophetic sounding reading last Sabbath. I opened my Bible with leading from the Holy Spirit because I didn't know what to do when I was uh, writing this. Yeah. And interestingly enough to me, the whole video, this whole video, came out from what I saw, but I haven't even gotten to what I found in the Bible. So here it goes. Exodus 40, verse 1, And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up uh, the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil. And thou shalt bring in the table, and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, the light of the lamps thereof, and thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony. 
and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle, and thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt set the lavar between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shalt put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shall hollow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering, and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver and his foot, and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments, and anoint him, and sanctify him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons, and clothe them with coats. And thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office, for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. The Ark of the Covenant, or the Ark of the Testimony, held God's Spirit. We are likened unto the Ark, as I talked about in my other videos. Perhaps our fleshy bodies are the veil covering the glory inside. Notice the candlesticks. I'm going to read from Revelation after this, but remember that the seven churches are likened unto seven candlesticks and glowing. The wise virgins had oil in their lamps, so there was to be lamps that were lit here. And the altar of gold for the incense should be set before the Ark of the Testimony. The testimony, the word testimony, reminds me of God's word. Jesus showed us God's word. Again, picture Revelation. The anointing oil was from Jesus getting anointed from his Father. Then Jesus anointed us through our belief in him. The priests also get washed in water. This is like the baptism in Jesus' name. And then they put on the holy garments, maybe our heavenly bodies or robes. Revelation 5.1 Then I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll of, with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. And I wept, and I wept, because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons of every tribe and language and priest, people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. So we have some very similar things, right up to the altar with Jesus, the lamb who was slain, and the golden bowls of incense. So I think these are very, very, very much related. It's just a pattern. What they were shown in the Old Testament is just a pattern of what is going to be happening in heaven. I hope you enjoyed this study and have a blessed day.